Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts with today's message. Here we are. We're going to read from Luke chapter 4 from verses 16 through 21. And then we'll finish with Pat's two cents. All right. Now. And he came to Nazareth. He is Jesus. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, this is Pat Love. This is Isaiah 61 if you want to check that scripture. But this is him reading it. Verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to those, excuse me, to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. All right. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Hmm. Okay, now this one I want to ask you, did you listen to what that scripture said? Did you really take a minute to listen? Because I want you to hear what he said. And I'm going to reiterate some of it. He has been anointed, this is Jesus, to preach the gospel, good news, hope, encouragement to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So how many of you are brokenhearted? How many of you deal with schizophrenia, deal with depression? Uh, what's the other one? Um, paranoia. Think about it. Uh, bipolar disorder. All of these issues in our minds, in our hearts, in our emotions, that's all God's God sent Jesus to handle it, you know. Okay, we don't have to live that way for the rest of our lives. Medication can subdue it and control a little bit of it. But if you really want to get healed from it, you got to get that bad boy gone. And only Jesus has that power, you guys. Listen to this. To preach deliverance to the captives. This is Pat's two cents I'm at. Now, listen, when you preach deliverance to the captives, that tells an abused woman, you can walk away. I remember a guy said he was strung out on heroin several hundreds of thousands of dollars every week. And he stood there wanting out. And I don't know what he said, but I remember what he said God told him. God told him these words, walk away. Just walk away. And as he turned away and began to walk, the desire for the heroin was gone permanently. He never had to kick the habit. He never had to go cold turkey. He walked away in obedience to God's word and was immediately delivered from a heroin addiction that he had had for years. All right. Listen to this. Recovering of sight to the blind. You ever get the point in your life where you feel like you have no clue which way to go? You have no idea who you are. What's it all about, Alfie? 
just have no clue. But I'm telling you, when God touches your heart, and you accept Jesus into your life, into your very being, you begin to see things and understand things you never, you were never aware of before. It's like, it's as if he gives you a whole new way of seeing things, of much higher level of understanding and insight. Then he adds wisdom to the, to the pot. I mean, here's something else. He can give you abilities you never had before you came to the Lord. Okay, listen to this. To set at liberty them that are bruised. How many of you have been either molested or raped or you've been mistreated when you were young? Or maybe you never knew who your father was or your mother was. Or if you did, they were dead, beaten, gone. And you were in the system. Whatever the case is, whatever the case may have been, do you know that all the negative residual effects of that all the wounds and the hurts from that, Jesus can remove as if they were never there, as if it never happened to you. He can handle every obstacle. He can handle every problem. He can handle every scar. He can heal. He can remove, he can deliver, he can free and totally renew. I really hope and pray that you choose, those of you who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, whatever you do, please give your heart to him. You will never get wet until you get in the water. Get all the way in it, baby. You have to get in him to experience him. You can't experience him standing on the outside as a spectator. You have to take the plunge. It's just like opening a bank account. You have to sign your name or else you can't do anything with anything. You might as well not even have it. You can write a check, but if you don't sign the check, it's worthless. You have to sign the dotted line and say, count me in. That's when you, exp you can't get good to come to God. You can't get it together to come to God. You can't clean yourself up to come to God, baby. That's why you're coming to God because he is the resurrection and the life. He is the lifter up of your head. He is the healer of your heart and soul. He is your deliverer. Your, your, oh, I'm telling you, he is everything, all the love you have ever longed for. He's better than all of that. God is love. Okay. So I want you to know that the only place you can go to get all that taken care of is God. Go through Jesus Christ, his son. Listen, let me share this real quick with you. I've told it before, but for the sake of this message, I'm going to include it once again. I was sitting in my living room. I had been going through inner healing classes and deliverance classes at Harvest Rock Church in Pasadena. And one afternoon or evening, it was, it was night, I sat down on my couch and I was bothered by a snide remark someone had made. Now, it was not anybody I was dating, wasn't anybody we were trying to get anything started. We just hung out and I said something at the restaurant and he came with a snide snap. And I'm wondering, well, what the heck was that about? I wasn't even necessary. So when I got home, rather than sloughing it off like I usually did, for some reason, <clears throat> yeah, for some reason, it wouldn't leave me alone. I couldn't shake it. I couldn't forget it. I couldn't drown it out. I couldn't just sleep on it. It would not let me sleep. Now, that's when you know God wants to do something. 
Don't ignore those moments and take a sleeping pill. Go to God. All I did was say a few words. I said, Lord, why is that bothering me so much? It's not, it wasn't that big of a deal. It really wasn't. I can't even remember what it was. That's how insignificant the comment was. But for some reason, God would not allow it to escape me. Listen to this. When I said that, yeah, I said, Lord, why does that bother me? You know how we throw questions up and we walk away not expecting an answer. Oh, I got one. The answer was, mm. <clears throat> the answer was, this is what God said. I heard him. Rejection. What does rejection have to do with that? That was a little, I mean, that wasn't. And then I started feeling all this emotion start welling up inside of me. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what's going on? Oh my goodness. And I could tell God had started something. And because I trusted him with me, I said, Lord, whatever you have to do, get the rejection out at the root. What did I say that for? Before I knew it, tremors started going off in my stomach. Now, I shared this story in my book. That still blows my mind. Tremors start going off in my stomach. Next thing I know, tears start coming and all this emotional pain and anguish. It was the most bizarre thing. All this pain and anguish. It's going all through my stomach, my abdomen, my emotions, and I'm just howling out. I was literally howling out the emotional pain. God was rooting out the rejection that stemmed from my mother, feeling like if she had had her chance, she wouldn't have given birth to me, you know, wishing I had never been born because I felt like I spoiled her life. It was a whole lot of stuff that was said, done, and not done that, that communicated that to me. Then I was made fun of in school when I got to a particular neighborhood in Brooklyn, so in elementary school. So it was like piles and piles of emotional scarring to the point where I started stuttering. I stuttered like a retard. Well, God was getting all of that out. I was I had already stopped stuttering by then. But my point is, that's how much scarring had been done. That's how much damage had been done. And God uprooted. Do you know that thing took two hours? It's what I refer to as an inner healing and deliverance session. Two hours. The last I would say maybe hour and a half or hour, hour and 15 minutes. All of that was spent dry heaving, you guys. Dry heaving. Now, I had I had, had a lot of juices that, that evening. I had a lot of orange juice and water and all of that. You would think all of that would come up. Not a bit of it came up. I dry heaved. When I got through dry heaving, I felt like a limp dish rag. All I could do at that point was sob and whimper. When the sob, when I was too weak to sob and the sobbing was done, then it was whimpering. And all of a sudden, I felt a command in my spirit where God told me, stand up now and praise me. And I stood up and praised him. I am telling you, when this thing was all over, he even had me play certain songs to minister what he was saying to my heart. When he got through with me, I felt like I had lost 100 pounds of weight. Of weight. You don't realize how much resentment, anger, hurt, rejection, ridicule, how much that weighs you down. Jesus is here to deliver, or deliver you from all that. 
I'm not going to keep on talking because I just want you to take the time and go to him yourself. You know you've got scars. You know you've got hang-ups. You know it. And probably the people closest to you know that as well. Don't run from it because it hurts. Go face it with Jesus. Have him get in there. Ask God to get in there and gouge all that crap up at the root and do whatever crying, hurting you've got to do. Because baby, when it's all over, you will be a brand new creature. Now, this was not a salvation experience. This was about 12 or 13 years after I had been saved to show you how thoroughly God works. We work in onion layers. And God will say, okay, this is good now. I've healed all that. That's great. But there comes a point where he says, ah, another appointed time. We got to go deeper. Let's get that out now. You got to go with it. Because even though it's uncomfortable, when you go with it, oh my goodness, your level of confidence and boldness and healing and wholeness, people see it on you and you see it on yourself. You will amaze yourself. Freedom is phenomenal. Go get yours.